Good morning, Glen Cliff. It's so good to be with you. And whether you're joining us live or catching us later in the day or the week, we're glad that you've shown up to encounter each other and to encounter God in this time and in this space together. We have a couple of announcements um, I want to clue you into before we re uh, get going with our worship this morning. Um, first of all, I just want to note that it's a new month and that's crazy that it's already August. 
Um, we all remain deeply sad that we're not able to meet together um, and continue to worship in the building, but we are grateful that we have this platform, whether you're um, calling in or watching the video with us. That's something to, to be grateful for, that we have at least that. Um, a new month also means that the newsletter should be finding your house soon or it has already arrived and you'll see a lot of those announcements in there. One of those that you need to take note of this week, August 7th, which is Friday night, we're planning to resume the music nights at Glencliff. So it's going to be a really fun time. Um, mark your calendars. You'll be able to Zoom um, call or phone call in to hear the wonderful music our congregation can join in together. Um, we're also starting a new series in worship, which is called Guided to New Ground. So we're going to explore some of the stories of um, God leading communities through struggle and then finding new wholeness. And one of the ways that we're going to do that, um, Neely is going to preach this morning. And then throughout the month of August, reaching into September, we'll have some guest preachers. So um, some that you might know. And that'll be really fun to uh, listen to and engage with Guided to New Ground. Finally, let's celebrate some birthdays. I know that Tanya's was this week and we're happy to celebrate her. And then we're also looking forward to two more this week, Paulette and Miss Mary are towards the end of the week. So let's celebrate together. We're so grateful that you were born um, and that you're in this community. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. Happy birthday. As we gather, I invite you to pause in these spaces made sacred because we are gathered in and with God, agreeing to be together in Christ's spirit among us. God is here always, and we are together in God now in worship. Let us pray. In the darkness of night and the brightness of day, you, O Lord, are present with us. We wrestle with situations which seem to drain us of our energy. We struggle to find out who you call us to be. You reach out to us with reassurance of empowerment and courage for the days ahead. Calm our spirits and prepare our hearts and lives to receive your awesome grace. Guide us in worship, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Glencliff. We're now entering into a time of centering and prayer. We want to lift up the following joys and prayer requests among our community. If you have any additional joys or requests to share, please email us at glencliffum at gmail.com or call us at 615-833-5010. We send special prayers for those caring for grandchildren, including Annette and Calvin, Tanya and Gary, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all living in nursing and rehabilitation homes, including Buddy, George, Connie, and Jackie, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those experiencing or recovering from illness, physically, mentally, or spiritually, including Pat, Judy, and Rhonda Lee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those struggling with addiction of any kind, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those experiencing loneliness, especially those homebound from COVID around the world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we have heard the story of Jacob as he wrestled with the angel, how he asked for the angel to bless him. We too come to you for blessing. There are so many times in our lives in which we have felt alienated, downtrodden, and alone. It is easy for us to wallow in our misery to whine about all the perceived injustices that have been heaped upon us. But you encourage us to stand strong, to seek the blessings that you have provided for us, to recognize the many ways that you are with us, giving us strength and courage. Be with us again, precious Lord. Guide our lives as we have brought our prayers before you for those near and dear to us seeking healing and hope for them. Let us also remember that those same mercies are lavished upon us, not because we deserve them, but because of your great and generous love for us. Help us receive these blessings and in turn be a blessing to someone else. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. This morning, our scripture comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, starting at verse 22 and reading through the end of the chapter. Hear these words. In the course of the night, Jacob arose 
took the entire caravan and crossed the ford of the Yabok River. After Jacob had crossed with all of his possessions, he returned to the camp and he was completely alone. And there, someone wrestled with Jacob until the first light of dawn. Seeing that Jacob could not be overpowered, the other struck Jacob at the socket of the hip and the hip was dislocated as they wrestled. Then Jacob's contender said, let me go for day is breaking. Jacob answered, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? The other asked. Jacob, he answered. The other said, your name will no longer be called Jacob or heel grabber, but Israel, overcomer of gods, because you have wrestled with both God and mortals and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, now tell me your name, I beg you. And the other said, why do you ask me my name? And bless Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, face of God, because I have seen God face to face and yet my life was spared. At sunrise, Jacob left Peniel, limping along from the injured hip. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Glencliff. I'm Reverend Neely Hicks, and it's such a pleasure to be with all of you today. I hope that you are well and blessed, safe and healthy wherever you are. So a few weeks ago, we reflected on the story of Jacob, who came out of his mother Rebecca's womb, grasping the heel of his twin brother. This was not a typical childbirth. In this week's scripture focus, Jacob is still fighting as a much older man. He goes from one fight to another. His life seems to be one of turmoil, either created from his own doing or by someone whom he has wronged. You may remember that after bribing his hungry brother with a bowl of soup, for the firstborn's inheritance, he goes on to fall in love with a beautiful woman. Her father says, you have to work for me seven years before I will let you marry my daughter. And then when the wedding day came, Jacob was tricked into actually marrying that one's young, actually older sister, whom he did not love. Then he had to work for another seven years to marry the one he actually loved. So yes, he had two wives, plus Jacob had some concubines, which if you don't know what a concubine is, it's a woman who lives as a wife, but has a lower status. In Africa, many of my friends will say, oh, there's the big wife and there's the little wives. So he had two big wives and he had probably several little wives. So his life was not free from complications. In the previous chapter of today's reading, Jacob's brother Esau wanted to kill him and his father-in-law. Remember, the father-in-law was his father-in-law two times over because he was the father of both wives, Leah and Rachel. He Jacob's father-in-law was furious at him for leaving with his two daughters without saying goodbye and taking a lot of possessions from him, including the gods he worshipped. This story com competes with any reality show you've ever seen, and yes, truth is stranger than fiction. So after fighting with so many human beings, Jacob came to a place where he actually fought then with God. The crazy thing is Jacob lived through it. He wasn't struck by lightning and he actually fell asleep after the fight. But when he awoke, he had been left with an injury, one hip out of joint, which made him walk with a limp the rest of his life. 
Rabbi Justin Goldstein wrote about Jacob's limp, saying that his walk symbolized a struggle as Jacob was constantly torn between the self he has potential to become, who is the God struggler, and the shadow holding him back, which is the deceiver. I think that's insightful. Probably most of us struggle with those two sides of ourselves, the self that is striving towards something bigger and better than just ourselves and a shadow that's holding us back. Jacob also emerged from this struggle with a new name, Israel, which means one who struggles with God. Jacob is considered one of the three fathers of our faith family, and I'm going to include the mothers in here too. He's the son of Isaac and Rebekah, and he's the grandson of Abraham and Sarah. So Jacob's 12 sons actually become the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel, which you'll be learning more about soon. And from them, the land became populated with those who would carry the faith, which you and I have been changed by today. So for today, what can you and I take away from Jacob's story? Perhaps we can learn that some things are worth fighting for. Another lesson, God is in the struggle with us. I want to take you back in time a little closer to 2020. In 1951, when Glencliff United Methodist Church first came into being, there were a lot of struggles going on. We officially had ended our war with Germany, but we were caught up in the Korean War and fighting there. A great flood spread across the Midwest and displaced over half a million people and killed many. The first thermonuclear bomb was created inside the United States. Our brothers and sisters of color were struggling for the rights given to them by the Constitution, but denied by our government and society. Backlash over desegregation was growing as African Americans were being allowed for the first time into places previously reserved for whites only. A document was actually created to speak to the world about what was going on here, about the public lynchings, about the wrongful convictions, the systematic racism that was happening to them inside our country. This document was called We Charge Genocide, the Crime of Government Against the Negro People. The document went unpublished inside the United States and was allegedly intercepted by the U.S. government on its way to Paris, failing to reach Paris in time. We see some of the same issues in our world now as those who were made in the image of God, just like you and I are, are still struggling today, struggling with their lives for rights and respect. Yet in the midst of those struggles, a group of people began to come together to build a church. Of what better place is there to build a church than in the midst of a struggle? Think about it. That is where the church needs to be. And Glencliff did just that, a place for community, a place to learn about God and how to live as Christ in the world. The years ahead brought changes inside and outside the church walls. Decline in mainline denominations within the United States could be felt right there on this corner of the world with Glencliff's member numbers going down, but faithfulness still arising. When the church invited Open Table Nashville to fill some of the building's unused space, 
the faithfulness and strength of those remaining became even more evident. Living the mission of Christ Jesus, the church took on serving Nashville's most vulnerable people, those living on the streets, by creating medical respite housing to serve as a bridge to permanent housing. This brought on more struggles, hard struggles. And you know what? God was in that struggle too. Amen? This one was worth fighting for. During our last church council meeting, we voted to become a mission congregation, differentiating ourselves from United Methodist churches so we could sustain our focus on mercy and justice ministries and connect in a larger way with other churches throughout the Nashville metro area. This request to become a mission congregation has to be approved at the Tennessee Annual Conference, which was postponed due to COVID. However, it is set now as a virtual conference on September 18th and 19th. We will transfer our status then and begin living more fully into this vision where respite is given to those recovering from illness and do not have homes to recover in. A place where relationships are cultivated and we get to know more of our brothers and sisters in the area. And most importantly, Glencliff will continue to be a place where the divine spark that's in us all can I hear an amen to that? Where the divine spark that's in us all will be nurtured through devotion and worship so that beloved community is found and creation and identity in God restored. Over this month, you will hear from voices from the past, people and pastors who contributed to where we are now. We did not get here on our own. We can see that as we look back at a faith family, at our faith family, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, a little bit of dysfunction there, but hey, we are a family and you and I are a moment in history, able to meet God in the struggle face to face. 232 years after the United States of America was founded, we elected our first African American president. Yeah, it took 232 years to do that. That's not good. Following the inauguration, civil rights leader John Lewis asked for his autograph. Written was, because of you, John, President Barack Obama. Because of you. If you had to write your name today to someone who led you to Christ Jesus, whose name would you write before yours? Because of you. Who is ushered in the way for you to feel God's love in a more intimate and deep way? And as we look to a future filled with hope and goodness, and yes, there will be struggles, who will look back at us and say, because of you? Friends, let's march on. Let us continue where any wounds of the past are bound up as a sign of God being in the struggle with us. Let us strive towards beloved community where everyone is treasured equally as a child of God and Glencliff shines even more brightly as a beacon on a hill. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and Oh,
Pastor Ingrid, and we are now going to experience Holy Communion together. Um, we've done this now a few times a little bit differently, um, and I'll sort of walk us through um, the way that we are going to do that together this morning. If you want to make sure that you have um, grape juice or something to drink and bread or a small bite of food, um, so that you can join with us as we gather around the table. Though physically separated from each other, we are still bound together as a family through our community and through our baptism. And as members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared prayers and our praises, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now our shared eating. And now as we share in the great Thanksgiving, each time I say, the family responds, you will repeat back to me the response that I have given. Let us begin. You are welcome to this table. All who are within the hearing of my voice are welcomed to this table. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us. So we lift up our hearts and the family says, we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. And the family says, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image. We are made in the image of God and you breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away, when our love has failed and our bodies diseased, you have reached out to us again and again, providing healing, providing wholeness, and providing a new life. When the floods came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. And day after day after day, your love has remained steadfast. And the family says, day after day after day. 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. And today I want to lift up, especially my granddaddy and my nanny who had birthdays this week um, and have been gone from us for a while, but I want to remember them. And I want to remember um, John Lewis as we laid him to rest this week too. So with people here on earth, and all the company of heaven, all the saints. We praise your name and we join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. And the family says, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And the family says, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son, O God, who came to preach the good news to the poor. Release to the captives, good news to the poor and release to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, freeing the oppressed and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick and the people said, he healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. And the family said, he is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day. And on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, a covenant of love poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healers and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. And the family says, Christ has died. And the family says, Christ has risen. And the family says, Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit, God, on all of us, all of us who are in hearing of these words and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them, for be, let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may serve as the body of Christ in this world, made whole, by the witness of Christ, by the passion of Christ, and by the life of Christ. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you, O oh God. We belong to your body. And the family says, we belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in the name of Jesus. 
And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in all the world. And the family says, Amen. This bread reminds us that life, no matter how broken, no matter how sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. This cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled again and again. These are the gifts of God for you, for us, the family of God. And the family says, thanks be to God. And now I invite you to prayerfully partake in Holy Communion at your home, in your sacred space, by whatever means you have. Let us pray. Day after day after day, O oh God, you give yourself to us. In two or three gathered in your name, in connections across the miles and in bread and wine. As we go from this place, gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body companioned by your people and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Creating God, we see your mercies anew each day and we give thanks for all you have provided and all you will provide. We give thanks to you. Create us in generous spirits, free us from the clutches of greed, and let us joyfully share so that all may have what they need. Amen. Your gifts matter. They can be mailed through Gl at Glencliff at 2901 Glencliff Road, Nashville, Tennessee. 
347-211 or give electronically through facebook.com slash glencliffumctn. Let's give. Day by day, God will lead us to those pools of peace where we can care for our friends and for strangers, even from a safe distance. Day by day, Jesus will call us to give ourselves in service, to anoint others in hope, to stay in the safe places for the good of all of God's people and to do no harm. Day by day, the Spirit shows us the people that we might be, the community that we might become when we once again gather together. Go forth in peace, friends.